Good morning, everyone. Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art here with you in the Craft Round the Clock group, and as well as my Tinker's Cart Art group. So we are doing something this week called Down on the Farm, which was perfect timing for me because I've been painting barn paintings lately. So thank you guys for joining. And I can't wait to paint a little barn with you and show you a barn painting I just did yesterday as well. So say hello when you come on. Let me bring up your comments here. Um, good morning. Good morning, everyone. I know it's a little early here, but uh, we are all over the place. So there are all different time zones. So maybe it's not so early in the morning for you as well. So good morning. Please pop on and say hello. Good morning. Um, if you would like, give StreamYard permission. Uh, the permissions that you grant just allow me to see your name this morning. So I would love to see it. Hey, Debbie, thank you very much um, for letting your friends know. Because if you have anybody who likes to craft or paint, it would be great to share this with them. Um, and um, if you have not, if you are my Tinker's Cart art peeps and you have not checked out Craft Around the Clock yet, do. Because if you love to paint and craft like I do, it's crafting all day long. What could be better, right? So we are going to paint. Um, actually, it's a barn painting I did um, last month in my art membership. We're going to do a smaller little scale of it. And um, it's just a barn painting. I just took my canvas. Oh, I'm going to tr I'm going to go so that you can see my canvas. Hang on. Let's let's remove the banner and um, I want you to be able to really see what I'm doing here. So, that's better. Now you can see what we're doing. Um, I just took a little canvas, 8 by 10. You can use whatever you have as I always stress, use what you have. Don't don't worry about having all the the things that I'm painting or the right things or the, or the you know, just improvise with what you have. So I just had a little canvas panel. I took it and did a little base coat of a salmon color. It's actually coral reef. Uh, I know DecoArt has a nice one that I use that I forget the name salmon maybe. I love, I'm, I'm addicted to this color lately. This matched up with the teal have been my like my go-to colors. And so we are going to do this barn uh, with a little bit of a teal roof, incorporate some teal in the background. And um, sometimes I do that. I start my paintings with just a palette of colors I like. I'll pick out four or five colors and kind of just gear my whole painting around that. That helps keep your painting a little consistent and um, it's kind of a fun way to uh, to start your painting. So let me pull up your comments. So please, as, you, as we go along, you just have any comments or questions, please put them up there and I'm here to answer them. Good morning, Tracy. Thank you for sharing me. Here we are. Um, and we're gonna paint a barn because it's down on the farm week. I'm gonna use a lot of my palette knife in this, acrylic paints, very simple. I have just some basic colors out, black and white, a couple shades of brown, burnt umber, burnt sienna, a teal that I love. Um, there's a couple of teals I love. There's Deco Arts uh, Peacock Teal. There's also Laguna. I just, like I say, this summer I've been doing everything in pinky shades and teals. Yellow ochre I use an awful lot. I have a cad yellow, a very dark phthalo green. Uh, not necessary. You could mix your greens up with your blue, of course, in yellow if you wanted to. I try to keep things a little simple sometimes so that um, we mix a lot of our colors and we don't have to have like all the colors under the rainbow. Although I love to do have, I do love to have all the colors. So I'm going to start. And when I paint, if you've seen me paint before, I go back to front. So we're going to start with our sky and then our ground. We're going to work on our barn, throw a little fence in there. I know it's ambitious for 45 minutes, but we're going to give it a whirl. Good morning, Tana. Thank you for watching. I know the colors are great for summer, fall, but this, I do base coat my canvases a lot before I paint a landscape. I'm a big plein air painter and I will mostly start with like a red base, but I wanted to try something different because this really makes that teal color pop. So sky, very simple. I always do my skies kind of the same. I take a little bit of blue and mix it right in my white. Hello, Darla. I am not going to mix a perfect shade on my palette and then just paint it like I'm painting a wall. I want my paints to be um, mixed on the palette, on, on the canvas. So I paint rather quickly wet and wet so that I can add more white if I want, darker blue if I want. Can you see how I'm doing sort of little crisscrossy strokes? starting from one side, moving over so that I can, in fact, um, blend as I go. If I know I want a cloud somewhere, I'll just take and wipe off the blue, take a little more white, and I'll sort of start popping in a cloud. You'll get a much natural, uh, a much more natural looking cloud if you start very light and vague like that. And I apologize. I know that the paint is a little shiny when it's wet, and I know it does kind of make a little glare. 
I am trying to leave a little of that salmon color showing through. I am not putting a big heavy coat on here and trying to cover. I want little bits of that salmon peeking through. So you're just doing this sort of haphazardly and working your way across and just getting a little basic sky in. Um, you know the good thing about acrylics is you can go back. You can paint right over it. You can add things and, and whatnot. So I'm not worried about having it just perfect as I go. I'm having fun with it. Slapping that paint around is fun. And uh, when you're painting, it's all about joy and, and having fun, right? So good. Oh, da Dahlia, um, that's funny. I was uh, up on a ladder painting some big wooden signs, some hand-carved signs for uh, some, some companies lately, and, and I was way up on the ladder. That was a little, uh, I don't know if I'm going to go that high on the ladders anymore. Let me tip it so maybe you can see a little uh, easier without the uh, glare. So here I have a background of just pretty wet paint, just a little blue into my white. If I want a cloud, I can add it in just very lightly. I'll come back to that and make it a little brighter, but for now, put it in where you want it, as vague as it is, and it just holds a little place, and it makes more of a wispy look for when we go back and add some brighter whites. Oh, try the salmon under your sky, and try a red even. I love the way the blues pop on a nice red background. So that's the sky. Look how quick we did that. I could get some greens down here, and I'm going to leave a lot of salmon showing through my green as well. So I'm going to take a little bit of the cad yellow. I'm going to lighten up my a little bit of that green, slapping it on just like I did, those little crisscrossy strokes. And I'm just going to work from here down to, again, keep the paint wet and wet. I want some dark areas down here a little bit. So I might take a tiny bit of black and blue and scooch it over and get a dark green. I might want a dark green across the horizon line there. But see how it almost blends by itself on the brush um, because you've got wet and wet there. Along the bottom of the barn, it might have a little shadow. So let's keep a little dark there. And I'm going to dry my brush off. I do use a dry brush a lot. I dry I have a paper towel in my hand and I'm always drying off the brush so I can get into a little different shade of the color. I could go a little lighter now. I'm gonna hop around with that light color a little bit. I might throw a little of this yellow ochre in there. My, my goal is to cover most of it with some green shades, but not everything. I have a little dark area here. I'm gonna have a little fence in there. We are ambitious, right? In 45 minutes, barn, fence, clouds, the whole bit. But we're going to do it quick and we're going to use the palette knife and that's really fun you can just slap on your paint after add highlights if you need to put some shadows in there if you need so can you see how rough i am i'm leaving lots of salmon showing through i'm going to just go into a few different colors i don't want to have it all the same shade of green that would be pretty boring to look at so i am just popping here and there with those greens and I'm actually going to take a little teal because we're going to put some teal into our painting. So let's get a little teal in there, just a little peek of that here and there. I'll tip it again so you can kind of see. Very rough and ready. Sometimes the less you think about it, the less you stress and try to make it perfect. You want to have fun with it. And so there we are. We have a foreground. We have a sky. We're going to base coat our barn in. And I'm going to have, again, salmon through the whole painting peeking out, but I do want to make a little bit of a gray to start. Hi, Victoria. Good morning. Um, another tip is when I make grays, a little black into white, I always add blue. I just would rather have this blue gray than just a really dull gray. So I've got a nice gray here. I paint dark to light a lot, you'll see. So I want the back, this is going to be a white barn here, but I want to get a little dark in there so that my white shows. If I was to go right with the white on top of the salmon, it just wouldn't have the depth. And I am leaving salmon showing through. See those little bits? And I'm going to just get that little barn shape. I sketched my windows and door in just for my mind to know where they're going. I am going to paint right over them. And again, I'm just scumbling. You can almost hear the brushes kind of dry. I'm scumbling that paint on. And that's leaving some of the salmon showing through, which is exactly what I want. So it's just kind of a blue-gray background. And the bat and the roof is going to be even darker to start with. I'm going to start almost black with that. And again, I always add a little blue. I just black is just not my uh 
my color. I'm a really colorful, whimsical painter, but as you know, we need to have some darks. So I add a little blue in there. If I'm painting anything like animals in their black fur, I will add blue and then I will highlight with a light blue more so than a white, which gives them a very gray, older looking. You know, they look a little older with all that gray highlighting and I use a blue, uh, a light blue. And, and if you do any kind of hair or animals, try highlighting with a light blue a little bit more so than um, just, just uh, black and white or just white because it turns very gray. So I know it looks very primitive, doesn't it? it looks, it's going to look like a barn. It really will after. Yeah, Victoria, I'm a really, really colorful painter. and But, you know, we do need darks. If I can get away with using a dark blue, I will. Um, but, yeah, I would rather have blue mixed right into my black or purple or something, you know, just something in there. Sometimes I'll just make my black. So you can get a nice chroma black by mixing all of your colors. Or some, you know, certain colors you can mix. And that gives you just a little bit more colorful black than just black out of the tube. Okay, that's a little wonky shaped, um, but we'll straighten that as we go. Okay, so most of our canvas is covered. We've got that salmon background peeking through. And as my sky dries a little bit, as it gets a little tacky is when I go in and I highlight my little clouds I put in there. And let me talk to you. I know I, if I'm painting landscapes, I do talk to you about my brushes. So brushes for landscapes and uh, a lot of things. I like these hog bristle brushes. They are stiffer than your synthetics. I like the uh, filbert because it's a rounded edge. I can use it for a lot. The uh, hog bristles usually come in the long handled. You'll find them in the fine art section. You don't need a lot of them, but a couple of sizes. You can hear as I'm scumbling my paint on that, that paint is digging right into the little grooves of the canvas. And that's what's nice about them. I, I, I love my synthetics and we'll be using those for the details, but they don't scrub in to the canvas as much as I'd like. Can you still do it? Of course. You could be doing your background with one of your, your big synthetic flats if you have that. Like I said, I'd rather have you start painting with what you have than um, wait till you have all the right materials and things. Good morning. Um, oh, yes. I'm going to, of course, this is recorded. And of course, we will be putting that up. And you can watch the recording anytime at all. Another tip, and I always share it, but I want, I, I want to say, say it again. When I'm painting or you're painting and you say, something's a little off, like something's a little off with this barn. A good way, of course, stand back. You're too close when you're painting this close. Take a picture of it, hold it in the mirror. Cause I can look in the video here now as I'm recording and really see that this barn is just kind of going uphill on the backside. I don't see it when I'm painting it, but I can see it in the video. So if I was to hold this in a mirror or take a picture, then you will start seeing, that's better already, that uh, what little thing might be off that might be bothering you. So, I like I said, I like the hog bristle brushes for a few different things. Going back and highlighting my clouds is one of them. I've got a little tiny, tiny bit of white where I want a cloud here. So now I'm going to go back with a clean hog bristle brush, dip the white into just the corner of the brush, pat it off a little bit. And where I want the clouds to be heaviest is towards the tops. So I'm taking that heavier white and just going to just get lightly brush across the top of the cloud, maybe kind of go out a little bit and very little effort, right? And there's a cloud, take a little bit more. I always pat it off. I don't want a big glob of paint. And if I need to have it heavier, I can just go back and hit it. So right now I'm just using a little bit, wiping it off. I know I have a little cloud started here, just a little half moon shape, another little half moon shape, kind of drag it out. Same over here. It's simple clouds. You can always go in front and make one a little bit in front if you want. Some of them can be just little wisps. But I have such little bit of paint on that brush, it's just softly going. Now, can you see the difference? If I had done a cloud that was harsh edged like that on one side and then on the other, it kind of looks like it's pasted on, like the clouds that little kids do these big things like they're pasted on. So that's why I do it heavy on the top and soften it on the bottom. And it just, um, I know it's sort of a methodical way to paint them, but we're doing a quick little painting and it works. So, all right. And again, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on your comments. So I am here and I will answer any later. If you're watching the recording, you can you can always um, ask me questions later. Okay, we're going to tackle the barn. And I am going to take, I'm going to just rinse off the little brush I used to put that gray on. It's a nice size because the barn is going to be sort of like slats. 
wooden slats and we're going to achieve that look easily with just this hog bristle brush. It's about the width that I want to make the slats. I have this brush in a few sizes just for that reason. This I think is a little too small, but let's just use this one we used quickly to put our background in of gray. And like I said, it's going to be white here now, so I'm going to take white on my brush. But if I went with this big brush load, it would be too heavy and cover too much. So just take off the paint. I'd rather have you go so light you hardly see it and go back again than to try to wipe off too much paint. So for this end of the barn, it's just horizontal stripes, and I'm just going to drag it across like that. A little more paint, light touch, drag it across, almost leaving a little space between. You can see it's a little darker. I'm just taking a little bit of paint each time and making slats. This is pro actually, these slats are probably a little too wide. Maybe I should use the smaller brush. I'm going to try to go and just make them a little thinner by using my brush on the side. Maybe I'll squeeze a few of those in. Let's see if I can just. And then on this side, I'm having them vertical. Actually, no, I'm having vertical up here. So across the front here, I am going to go ahead again and just make them. Can you see I've tilted my brush a little, so I'm getting a little thinner. Look here, those were a little thick. I'm not gonna really worry about it, but I'm just gonna go and do. Now, they probably will dry a little lighter and they might fade in. To me, looking at it as I'm painting, it's very light, but I'm in the video, I can see it's, it's really showing up. But what's good about going very light like this at first is you can go back and do it as many times as you'd like. So this is a very, very simple, quick barn, but I think that you'll get some techniques out of it that you could use if you were even painting it bigger. You can see I'm spacing just the littlest bit, so these look like slats, like wooden slats almost. Pretty simple, right? Is that simple? Hey, Katie, good morning. And like I said, you could go back and finesse them a little bit after if you wanted to get a little darker, make these guys a little bit um, better shaped. You can do that. The brush is actually doing all the work, really. And I would just go back if I thought I needed to. Like when I start on this side, I get a nice edge. This side, it sort of tapers away. You could always go back and just do this and get them, you know, better edged if you thought you needed to. Pretty barn, it's pretty old barn farm, farmhousey looking, right? So there we go. And um, here's where it's going to be fun because I put that teal on and I absolutely love the teal. I can use the same brush because it's a light color. I'll just wipe off the excess white, go into my teal, and I'm going to go and drag a little paint afterwards with the palette knife, and that gives it a real raggedy, raggedy look. So um, a little teal, that peacock teal or whatever teal you have. You can make a beautiful teal also if you have your blue and like a dark phthalo green like this, it makes a beautiful teal as well. Going light, I'm going to just scumble almost a coat of this teal. Now, I'm kind of leaving a little dark around the edges, and this has a little dividing. This is like one part of the roof here, say, right? And I'm scumbling that in. I'm going to make this much brighter, but I'm going to start light. And like I said, I'm leaving a little dark around the edge, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a space here where the roof sort of tips at a different angle. And I'm doing it just to start to get it on there. This is a great size because I can twirl it around and get upside down. And But I painted this on a much larger canvas as well. So you can adjust the sizes. I didn't set up a little texting thing for the tracer on this one, but if you'd like me to make a tracer, I can do that for you. Just put in the comments that you want a tracer and I can and message you a link. I'll make a tracer for it and I'll send that to you. I'll do that later on. So if you would like the tracer, it was easy enough to sketch, but if you'd like the tracer, certainly just give me a little um, shout out in the comments. I want a little of the blue showing on this side. You could go ahead with your tiny little uh, detail brush and do it if you want. I'm just gonna use this brush on the side and it works. Cause this is kind of, like I said, it's kind of like not a precise, perfect little painting. I want that to dry. I'll put a little more on there, maybe just with the palette knife even. Actually, the original painting I did had a little cupola up here, but where this is just eight by 10, it's kind of smaller. I'm doing the barn, but I can add that cupola on and I can make it a bigger 11 by 14 size for you as well if you would like the tracer. So yeah, okay, Gail, I'll go back to the comments later and I will get some tracers made for you. So I know when you're doing building, sometimes it's much easier to have something um, to actually go by. Okay, so now I'm going to put in a little door here. 
I'll switch over now to my synthetic brushes. I love the flats because sometimes you could use the size flat you have just for a window or a door. So for this door, it's going to be a little bigger. We're just going to do this. And before I do the windows, I'm going to add a little bit of some touches with the palette knife. I could have done that before I did this too, but let me go ahead. I have, um, how many of you guys like to paint with palette knives? Sometimes I'll paint the whole painting with a palette knife. So I have a few sizes. I have been loving this flat one. It's, can you see it's like flat and square? And this little one is great for little areas. This is the one I've always had just for mixing paint, but I use it for things too. And uh, they really are, are, when you're doing landscape painting, it's nice just to add some quick highlights or some uh, texture with your palette knife. So I would probably take a little white now. I don't want too much. I just got a little bit. Again, I'd rather go super light and find out I don't have enough and, and go back for more. And you can simply just drag across. And let me do it closer so you can see. You can see the texture that you're going to get. Can you see how it gives it even a little more texture than just the white paint from the brush? So I'm just going to go over across um, like these are the little slats. Sometimes it shows more texture than others. It's not it's not like I'm trying to get a perfect look. Up here I can do the same thing, especially where this is not bright white yet. I can really drag these right down. And I love when it barely touches the surface and gives you texture like this little spots, it's it's the canvas, the texture of the canvas is what's going into play here. And that is what gives you those ridges. So when you're sliding this really smooth knife across the surface, you are just hitting the ridges sometime. So it's really kind of fun. Um, I've done floral paintings just using the palette knife. Landscapes, or sometimes the whole painting palette knife and sometimes just little touches like this for texture. So I guess I would probably have done these uh, texture before I paint my uh, doorway, but it's okay, it still works. And you can add other colors. I'm doing white for the slats, but I might just go ahead in with a little of the teal in places if I want to, just to get, I like to bring those colors through my painting and it just looks more cohesive. So a little bit, some streaks. That's a little bit bright, that one, but I'll just scrape it down a little. If you get something you really don't like, you could take your palette knife and scrape it right up. I'm going to be using a little more of that yellow ochre in the um, foreground. So we'll put maybe a little of that here and there. So you can have other colors in there too. If that bothers me, it's kind of bothering me the where I had too much teal, I'll just go a little over with the white. And for the roof, I think I'll use that as my base and now just go in and because of the texture I can get, put a little heavier teal a little white on there. And I'm blending that white in with that tail a little bit so it's not as bright as the sides here. Just that, those little touches, aren't they cool? So we painted the loop with the teal, but then we went over it with the palette knife with some teal and a little white. And now we'll go back and do our windows. And I do have a square brush that is, um, kind of nice because it's the size of my little windows. So I'm just going to take that dark blue black again and just get a little blue one there. And I have a little window. See, I did two little windows up here. Now, barns are all sizes and shapes. And you could look at photos of barns if you want to, but sometimes you could just put things where you want them. And I might do some windows down the side. I did that on my little sample. I have a image of the painting that I painted over here near me. Paint's been sitting up not too long, but it's still drying a little bit. So don't um, worry about it. I add water as I go so I can get a nice smooth stroke without the paint dragging. So if your paint's dragging or dry, just add a little water to it. There's some little windows. I outline them just a little bit. How I do that is use my little uh, detail brush. And I do keep my paint thin when I'm doing detail. So I'm going to add some water to my white paint, make it a little thinner. And what I do is I'm just going to take a little white and go kind of on the inside of this doorway so it looks a little outlined by the black. I might want it a little thicker, a little more board size there. And then I do the same thing for the little guys. Um, and it's rough and ready. It's not like I'm not going to struggle and do a perfect little outline and try to make the windows all perfectly square. 
uh, if I'm doing it like wonky on purpose so that no one's expecting it to be perfectly square. And then I don't have to uh, kill myself trying to make everything just right. So I'm just putting little bits of white outline, not even bright. It's kind of watery and faded. So I don't even have to, you know, if it was perfectly white and standing out, you'd be looking at it and saying, oh, it's a little crooked. I don't really like it. Do it just light and quick. Remember, people are standing four or five feet away from your painting. They're not looking at it from six inches like we are. And uh, so give yourself a little grace and give yourself a, a break and just have fun with it and see what comes up. And hi, Charlotte. I saw you there coming on. And Debbie. Hi, guys. Oh, Barnes. Wait, I'll show you the paint, the painting I painted uh, yesterday. Um, I have an online art membership and um, fall's coming. So I have a barn that I just finished with an old truck. And then I'm doing an Halloween one with a tractor with pumpkins um, next. So that's going to be fun. I am kind of addicted to the old barns now that we started. And when I saw that this week was down on the farm on Craft Round the Clock, I was super happy because I was painting barns anyway. So anyways, yeah. Hi, Debbie. Yeah, it's it's amazing if you just step back, have fun with it, keep it simple. And really, we'll, we still have quite a bit of time to finish this. And so you don't need lots, lots of time. I know so many people have a hard time starting to paint. And I asked the questions in my groups, what is the biggest struggle? One of the biggest struggles is finding the time. So I'm always giving tips on how to incorporate art in your life easily and quickly. And so little paintings that are quick are just as much fun as something big that you're struggling over. And I'm a big sketcher. So I'm always telling my people to sketch things, right? Charlotte, Charlotte's been doing a lot of sketching. Um, you can just fit it in with a little book and a pencil or some colored pencils. And even if you're in the car waiting for someone or a doctor's appointment, you can incorporate art and that will spur ideas for paintings. And you don't have to have a big studio and all the things and all the time. You can squeeze it in and it'll make your life so much happier. Um, this one, Katie, is just a little 8 by 10 canvas board. My original I did on 11 by 14. But I'll give you guys tracers for all the sizes and you can do what you wish. And what I'll do is I'll upload pictures of my finished uh, paintings because like I said, I had a little cupola on there you might like um, and and whatnot. So this little, um, I'm just looking at the video, that little salmon line is bothering me because it's just like outlining the barn. I want the salmon showing through, but I'm going to bring the sky teeny bit down here a little bit just um like I said, because hold your things up into a mirror or take a picture. And and uh, if you think something's kind of wonky or bothering you, I just wanted to have it not a solid line. I don't want your eye drawn to just that line. I want it peeking through, but not taking over, you know. So that, that, that kind of makes me feel a little better. You can go back with these acrylics and build up and build up, which is great. Um, and add other colors and whatnot. So as things dry, they do tend to um, sink in sometimes and not be as uh, vibrant as I'd like. So I know that this, I want to get a little bit more texture on the top of that. So if I just sort of drag a dry palette knife across, it's just picking up, it's just picking up the texture of the canvas, but it looks kind of cool and splattered. Inside um, the, the uh, windows in the door, I don't want it to look like the black hole like it does. So you can just take, I've teal on this brush still. You can just rub a little teal in there. Barely any, but just a little bit in those guys, just to make it look like there's some depth there. And let's go ahead and texture up some of our um, uh, grasses there. And the tree line is pretty sparse. I want to make it look like there's some trees back there, shrubs, whatever. So I'm going to take a very dark green again, which is just my green with some blue and black in it. And again, because I start dark and go light, I'm just going to make little shapes of bushes back there. They're just very rough and just just a little tree line back there. Dark. It's, it looks black on the camera, but it's a dark, dark green. Hi, Deb. Thank you. It's very easy to get that weathered look with just scumbling your paint on and then the palette knife. And then I've got my dark, so I just want to give it a little light. So I'm taking a lighter green now. That green with that cad yellow makes a nice light green. I might add the tiniest bit of white. It's very transparent because of the yellow is transparent, but a, a little white would really make it show up. So I'm just going to tap the tops of these trees back there with some light green. I might throw a little yellow ochre in there. They're simply little daubs of paint 
but now it looks like there's something back there. And now I'm going to do the rest of this with the palette knife because that was so much fun. Um, I don't even, it doesn't even matter which one you were to grab, really. I am going to just use some of the same colors that we had on there. So I had some dark areas. I'll take that dark again and I'm going to put it in a little bit with the palette knife. I had it across the base of the barn. So I'm almost using what I put on with my brush as a little guide. Not that you need one. You could just put in wherever you want. You want darks and lights and just different colors next to each other. And that's going to make this foreground pretty interesting. So I'm not going to say that I'm putting stripes in, but if I have a dark area and a light area, I might do a little dark in between. I did put a little path coming out of the barn. So I can take some brown and with I could do it with my brush or I am just going to take that burnt umber. Paths start a little heavier there and they're going to just, I like to zigzag them out. A little burnt uh, sienna maybe on top of that. I'll add a little white in a minute, but, and it's, I know it's dark there, but all I did was palette knife in a little bit of a path. And now I'll go back and get some of these greens in. Just mixing some shades right up on my palette. And like I say, it's nice because every time I go back and grab the color, sometimes it's lighter. If I take just yellow, sometimes it's darker. I can mix it on here. It's very globby, but it's, it's almost like frosting a cake, I guess, or cupcakes. And I do like that bright yellow, but I like to tone it down a little bit with this. Have a little bit of that yellow ochre. It's really natural looking. I'm doing it straight yellow ochre. You can take yellow ochre and mix it with your greens. You could put it on top of something you have. All different shades you can use. And I'm even gonna go in with some teal too. So I wanna bring that teal back. I haven't lost any of the salmon. If I had lost some of that color by too much paint, I would probably just go in with the palette knife and put it in here and there. You can hit the trees a little bit with a little of that teal if you like. I just love the texture. I love the texture of big painterly brush strokes or the palette knife. And if you look at this really close, 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 it's just an abstract painting, right? But then you step back and you've got something. Just to add a little more texture to this, I know it's kind of crazy, but I took my toothbrush and you know how you can spatter with your toothbrush? You just add water to your, to your paint. I spattered a little bit with the dark green or the browns just to give it texture. I'm going to just wet my toothbrush here. I'm going to probably take some dark green, that really dark that we had. Let's see. And I'm going to just, and when you do spatter, like just move anything that you don't want spattered, everything gets spattered, it seemed. And I just add a little spatter into the foreground. That's not showing up much, so maybe I'll try it with the brown. Hardly see it, but it just gives it a little texture. I'll show you it up close again. Now I hit my barn a little bit there, but I think I might just wipe it off. So you can see some little texture there with the little spray. You don't want it really on your sky. So I'm gonna just wipe those few stray dots off that have gathered. Sometimes on the barn it's okay too because it's sort of old and weathered and it kind of gives a look nice look to the painting. And uh, there, so that is enough there. I'm going to put in my little poles. I'm going to put them in with my little brush and then just put the palette knife over, over them. Palette knife makes a great textured little pole, but let's just take a very dark, almost black brown to start so we know where it is. Thank you, Deb. It is fun to paint these old weathered barns. You could put things in front of them. I'll show you how I've got the truck in one tractor, um, make this a winter scene and put a snowman. So you would just do a lot of white. Um, actually, I, I do have a snow scene here to show you. You'll see what uh, you can do to make the different seasons, which is cool. Christmas tree for Christmas. Um, Hi, hey, Pat. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Um, so I just took and put just these dark areas, uh, little poles, black, brown. You might want to wait till the grass dries. I'm going to do it now because we're on a time schedule. And can you see how I'm making them all crookedy on purpose? Because if we try it again to make them perfect, then you'd, your eye would expect to see them perfect. And if they're not all perfect, it would kind of bug you. So I am just going to make them 
squiggly and waggly, and I'm going to make them go right off there. So that's all they are to start with. And that just places them for me. I really want to do most of them with the palette knife, but that places them. I take a little white now, and I'm just going to get a little white on there. I would probably do a little burnt sienna too. So let's do the white. We'll get a little burnt sienna in there so they're not just so white. I'm using my little thin palette knife for this one. It, it's great. It's almost the size of the little poles, posts. The bigger painting is a little more detailed. I put more of a little gate there. Um, I don't think it really matters. You can also do uh, posts going across if you like. I did it as barbed wire, but it could be anything you wanted. A little bit of the burnt sienna, which is that reddish brown, just to give it more of a wood look. You can see I'm not worrying that each one is the same or whatnot. So there are some little barn, uh, not barn poles. I did want to go back and put a tiny bit of white into my path so that would be, that would show up. And for the barbed wire look, I did take my black, watered it down, and it's going to be something like this. So, so this is the pole, say. I'm going to just wrap the barbed wire around it and carry the little things over to the next pole, wrap it around. I know that's pretty detailed for this little painting, but you could, like I said, you could just put another stroke of wood across. And I've got a little bit of uh, black from my finger here on my sky. So let's just take that. Now, something like this, if you make a mistake, if it's still wet, you can take a wet paintbrush, a little paper towel, wipe it off. Um, that has dried. So all I would do is just go back with my sky color and, co and cover it. So, you know, you, it's easy to fix mistakes and things. Don't panic and in in, in, you're painting an acrylic, you can fix anything. So my little thin brush that I just put down, here we are, thin down black paint, and I'm just gonna wrap that around each pole, bring it across. It's a small detail, you'll hardly notice it, but it's nice to have some little details in the painting sometimes. I'm going a little quick because the paint's very wet. So I would say on yours, just let these, these things dry in between. And you can certainly be a little bit more detailed painter. You don't have to do it as rough and, and abstracty as this. You could take the pattern and of course, just make it your own. I love to see what people do with the paintings. Um, the tracers in the classes because it's almost better when you just go off and do your own thing. It's so cool to see everybody's different takes on things. Good morning, Gretchen. Thanks for watching. Um, thank you guys for turning up this morning. Thanks, Kimberly. And let's see. So now you could go back and, and do anything. If you thought, oh, that's a little rough. It's too much for me. I want to smooth it out. You could go back with, you know, your teal and white and tone it down a little. You can add little bits of color where you like. I want a little bit of a lighter teal running through that foreground maybe in some places. So I'll just mix up with my knife and just let it skim across the top. Um, I think I did put a little bit of a shadow here. So along this side where the teal was, I, since I have that light black washi paint there, I just put that as a little shadow here. And you can go back and touch up whatever. Like I said, I did that big glob of teal there. Maybe not crazy about it. Now that it's dry, I could go back and just go right over it. If you wanted to make the little lines of the barn a little more um, visible, you could take the really, I wouldn't take a heavy black. I would take a little washy black and you could certainly go and put a little bit between if you really wanted to divide those up a little more. If you like that look, you could just, I just put a little bit of a washy line up and down. You know, it just outlines these little slats a little more if you wanted to do something like that. Hey, Sharon. Hello. Hey, Carol. Oh, first time. Welcome. Um, welcome, welcome. And thank you. I'm an acrylic painter and I teach uh, acrylic painting to all abilities. Like if you're a beginner and haven't even touched a paintbrush, I do everything very step by step. And if you're a more intermediate painter, there's 
always um, more challenging paintings too. So I love coming on and doing these quick segments. It's really, especially with a theme, it's really fun. And um, sometimes I'll just do a little element of a painting that you can incorporate into other things or how to do like one stroke flowers. And sometimes um, I jump in and do the whole painting. I don't know how many watched me do the raccoon the other the other week and that was fun, 45 minute uh, little raccoon um, eating the watermelon, which was cool. Hey, Julia. Well, thank you for saying hello. I love it when you guys let me know where you're from, too, because I love seeing people from all over watching. Um, I would call this done now. I would maybe go back and, and uh, darken up some of my poles uh, that might have picked up some of the green that's behind it. Hi, Cindy. Um, you're welcome. Thanks for watching. And let me show you what I did yesterday. Um, this is a painting that is... Um, going to be in my art membership, but I want, I was, I'm on a, bar, a barn kick. So I did a big painting of this, which is a little more detailed, which I'll share the pictures with you and the traces. So all you guys watching, if you want to trace it, just put it in the comments and I'll get you tracers. Hey, Charlene. Oh, Canada. Yes. I'm the same way. There's so much on craft around the clock that I'm not familiar with, with the crafting. And I love watching and learning new techniques. It, it's just, my brain is always going. So, um, Theme weeks are fun. That's exactly it. That's what I love is because I thought, oh, this one was easy for me because I'm painting barns right now. But um, the fruit one was, you know, it's kind of cool to uh, have the theme, think about it. I have uh, the light the light one that's coming up. I have some ideas for which I would never have thought of. So um, now if it says Facebook user, I don't have your name. I'm going to try to respond to your uh, tracer request. I'm just not sure how that works. But you can always find me on Tinker's Cart Art there, and um, I will post them as well in both groups. So that will help, too. I'll try to post the links to them. Hey, Deb, thank you. Yeah, this was pretty simple. I have to tell you, I make the painting simple, and I surprise myself most of the time. I just took the truck, and I did it all with the dark gray, kind of like we did with the barn. And then I, wa I, I did some uh, burnt sienna and a little orange base. So this was very dark gray base truck with just those little bits of the of the uh, burnt sienna, which is going to be like rust showing through. And then afterwards, I scumbled on some of the teal, and then I finished it off again with the palette knife. Of course, battering this whole painting with snow afterwards really makes it like 100% better. But palette knife mountains, clouds very much like I showed you today, but just the background, we used some yellow. Now you don't think to use yellow in your sky. And I have done green skies even like, it's amazing like what you can use for skies. Like who would think to put yellow, right? Um, the barn was very similar, painted it um, like a rusty color red and streaked the salmon -y color. This is that salmon color again, streaked that on. So very similar, very dark background with, again, a little bit of the yellow okra and palette knife the snow on. So it looks kind of detailed, but it was pretty simple, to be honest. Um, so and uh, the truck and barn, I, I, I have that in my art membership, but I probably will do that as a class as well. So if you guys um, let me put this. I have two minutes. Let me put this number up for you. If you text me at this number. Where is it? Okay, if you text me at that my, my number, you will know when I'm going live to paint or if I'm offering any classes or anything. You could follow me on Tinker's Cart Art, of course. But also, if you want to be on my texting list, it's kind of a good way to keep in touch in case Facebook is being wonky or something. So there's that if you want to uh, know when I'm going live to paint or if I am offering a class. Um, and I have a lot on YouTube, so check me out on YouTube um, as well, uh, Tinker's Cart Art, because I do have a lot of free classes there for you. I didn't do that live yet, Carol. I just painted that yesterday, and now I'm going to figure out what I'm going to when I'm going to offer that. So, well, thank you guys. We're getting we're wrapping it up. Any quick questions? I'm here, and I will monitor the comments afterwards as well. Like I said, and I appreciate y'all getting up in the morning here and and watching um, me paint. So it's been a fun fun morning so far, and uh, we can all go off now and um, do some more art, right? Yeah. And you guys watch. I do have the, the recording will be up. I'll, I'll have to edit it a little bit and then I'll have that offered for you. I'll probably put that up tomorrow. And oh, I'm glad you found me too, Carol. I love that. Um, I love having new people join me to paint. And uh, even if you're not a painter, you can incorporate some of these little bits on other craft things that you guys do. So I'm going to pop off now and then let the next person get started. So stick around. There'll be great crafts 
all day long and I'll be watching as well. So we'll see you all next time. Bye. Thanks guys.